Hi, it's Jack Hedges from the Humans Connecting Team. Our podcast is all about serving, supporting, challenging, and inspiring you to become a connected human. The content of our podcast is of a general nature, and consuming this content is not the same as seeking individual advice from a connection mentor, a registered mental health professional, or a coach. Conversations about human connection address loneliness. We destigmatize loneliness here at Humans Connecting. We do that by talking about loneliness openly. Loneliness conversations necessarily include a range of topics which at times may be difficult for us to talk about, to hear and to sit with. If throughout our conversation this is true for you, we encourage you to please contact a mental health hotline. The link in the episode description can help you find some immediate support for many places you may be in the world. Our advice to you is this. Meet yourself where you are and how you are right now. If you don't feel up to it, we'll be right here ready to be by your side when you are ready. We're glad you're here. Let's jump in. It's Phil. Welcome to the Humans Connecting Podcast. You're going to love this episode because you're going to meet Mona Potaka, Humans Connecting's business manager. But fair warning, you're probably going to want to use these few minutes of introductory time to go and get a pen and a piece of paper because Mona just casually dispenses so much wisdom about connection and how you can be a connected human that you're going to want to capture as much of it as you can. And she's also going to do a great job explaining the kind of social impact that we here at Humans Connecting are called to make. And you're also going to want to share this episode with someone in your life who you feel could really benefit from listening to Mona's story of addiction, especially what she now knows to be disconnection from herself and from those most important to her, stemming from thoughts and feelings of loneliness in early adulthood. But before we get into all of that, I want to take a moment and take that moment while you're searching desperately for a pen and paper uh, to introduce myself because I'm Phil McAuliffe and I'm the founder of Humans Connecting. And I'm also a global loneliness thought leader, more of that in this episode, and the host of this podcast. I'm also a speaker on loneliness and human connection. I'm a media commentator, an author, a connection mentor, and I'm a human who is simply endlessly curious about humans and the human condition. And Loneliness is part of the human condition and everybody experiences loneliness at uh, loneliness at times in life. For me, I feel like I wrestled with the thoughts and feelings of loneliness for most of my life. But as I entered middle age a few years ago, the loneliness that I was experiencing became, well, impossible to ignore. And I got some support through a coaching program and I started to notice the signs of loneliness all around me. And I got curious and I started to provide the support that I wish that I had when I realized that what I was experiencing was loneliness. And our work here at Humans Connecting has two main goals. The first is to destigmatize loneliness. And then the second is to help you, wherever you are in the world, whatever you do in the world and however you identify as a human to get the connection that you need and that you absolutely deserve. And we're right here at humansconnecting.org when you're ready to feel more connected and better equipped to respond to loneliness when you next experience it. Finally, here at Humans Connecting, this is a new podcast. This is the very, this is the fifth episode. 
And we are a fledgling social impact enterprise with bold ambitions to help the world feel more connected because the humans within that world are feeling connected to themselves, to those most important to them, and to their communities. So if this episode or any of our content makes you think, supports you, or inspires you, please know that sharing this episode with just one other person is a great way to say thank you to us for what we've provided and to support someone else who you know will benefit from our wisdom, our insights, and our perspectives. And another way of supporting us is to leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or on whichever podcast service you're listening to us now. And that also includes you here on YouTube if you're watching us now. Like, give us a comment, like, say hi, a thumbs up, all that kind of stuff that, um, that, that you know, helps get the content seen on, um, on, on these services. All of these things. So whether it's the review or forwarding it to someone, both things take moments, both support us and this podcast without costs, and frankly, make a huge difference. And we simply thank you for your support. Now, at this point in a regular introduction, I'd be reading our guest's bio so you have a sense of how, well, frankly, how awesome they are. But Wana does such a great job of introducing herself in our conversation that I just, well, I just want to stop doing this. Uh, and uh, so you get to meet her and hear about herself in her words as quickly as possible. So let's do just that. Did I give you enough time to get your pen and paper? And are your pens poised over that paper so you could be ready to absorb some of the connection wisdom Moana dispenses during our chat? Great. Let's go. Moana Pataka, welcome to, well, I think, like we could say the Humans Connecting podcast, but you're part of the Humans Connecting team. So really, it's your podcast. So welcome to your podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Kia ora. Um, it's, we have the best chats, right? And I think ever since, uh, like, you know, when we met in person back in Wellington, back in 2020, um, and I, I just want to, um, like, just put it out there that uh, the expectations for good chat today are high. No pressure. No, no pressure. So, Mona, for those of the, the for the viewer, for the listener, um, wherever they are in the world tuning in and wanting to know who you are, how you are, why you are, all the things about you and what brought you to be part of the Humans Connecting team and what you do here and all that kind of stuff that we'll get into, who are you? Uh, yeah, well... Thanks, Phil. Um, let's start off with, um, yeah, who I am. Ko mona pōtaka tōku ingoa. He uria hau no Ngāti Whakaue, no Tapuika, no Waitaha, no Ngāti Wai. He tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. So uh, the translation for that from Te Reo Māori, uh, my name's Mona Pōtaka. Um, I and descended from the tribes of Ngāti Pukaui, Tapuika, Waitaha and Ngāti Wai. And just a big greeting to all that are listening to the podcast today. Uh, now I've got to swing back to those questions that you have. I've done the who I am. Um, where have I come from? Uh, so, yeah, in terms of our journey, Phil, that was back in 2020. I believe we mm -hmm. met at a pub in Wellington. Maybe and you joined where, us where? afterwards, me and Jeff. Jeff had... Yep. Uh, had a couple, and um, yeah, that was my first real introduction to not only you, Phil, but what you were doing in the loneliness and connection space. So it's kind of it's kind of the how I got there because I remember I was so interested in what you were doing, and uh, we we spent a fair amount of time just talking about uh, what you were doing at the time with um, your blog and uh, the mentoring and then where we thought it could go. So it's cool uh, that in 2024, which is not that 
far down the line, um, here we are with humans connecting. Yeah, it's pretty, it's really cool and, and humbling and exciting that we're doing this. I, yes, humbling and excitement is felt here too. Um, and uh, I, I love, um, uh, I, in my mind's eye, I am back uh, at uh, at Fortune Favors uh, in in Wellington, um, and uh, um, I forget what little street that it was on, but just near Cuba Street. And um, but uh, yeah, that was such a great night. Um, and you know, twenty twenty does feel like an eternity ago, but also feels like about last week. Um, and uh, just kind of in that whole space time, like means nothing um, uh, over the last few years. But I'm just want to say of how thrilled I am that you're here and that you are you are here um, and uh, and 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 part of the part of the team here because one of the things that I find really fascinating is the um like we are in whatever we're doing as humans we are the sum of our experiences um and you know we, we'll, we'll get into some of your experiences um that uh, that you know have, have piqued your interest to to lead you lead you here but just um i, I want to wanted to be really clear like you, you're actually in new zealand yes Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, Beautiful New Zealand. Yes. Uh, and um, and and so you're you're part of the team that makes us international. Um, and you're the you're the first in the world to uh, first in the team um, uh, to rise uh, every morning. And so you're you're at the cutting edge of humans connecting globally. Um, <laughs> but like where. Well, the question the question I want to ask is like, you know, beyond I, I think we're going to get a sense of who you are and how you are, like from your answers. I understand like, you know, those kind of questions are pretty odd. Yeah, yeah. Um I'm ready. Good. So I wanna like what what what's what's your role here at Humans Connecting and like what are you working on now? So with Humans Connecting, um, my role would be called the business manager of Humans Connecting, um, which sounds really naff and probably too formal. I would liken what I do is sort of being the, the oil that gets the machine running. So uh, I'll, I'm, I'm down with whatever project I help with, whatever I can help out with, um, and some guys listening to the podcast would have heard that with um, the acknowledgement of country, uh, <laughs> nice. little intros and stuff like that, because I'm just here to give it a go. Um, but within that sort of business administrative side, um, what I'm taking care of at the moment is uh, the business plan and trying to tie all of these loose ends up. So we know what we're doing. Um, we're very clear on what our takers on things to do with loneliness and connection and now we've just got to kind of uh, wrap that up in a nice package that uh, other people can understand and read and digest so that they understand what we're up to as well so yeah those are my big projects at the moment um, as well as being just two hours ahead of everyone else so I get the notifications first and get excited first before anybody else is even awake yeah, yeah. Um, and um, I think that's, you know, without wanting this to kind of be like a LinkedIn kind of uh, chat, that um, because we are a social enterprise uh, and for many, um, for many, that's kind of like an interesting kind of set of words. Um, but as a social enterprise, like, you know, we are, we do things differently, like we aren't entirely for profit we are not a not-for-profit um and uh but what we do is in um as a social enterprise uh one of the requirements is that uh the majority of the profits get reinvested into maximizing uh impact 
uh, and feeding impact. And those impacts need to have a, um, a social or an environmental or um, there's a third one that I can't remember, but um, it has to have some kind of, of social focus. Um, and for us, ours is very clear, uh, is that we are here to help humans feel more connected, uh, to listen to their loneliness uh, and, and move through it. So what you're doing, Mono, is, is making sure that what is like, what we can talk about within our team really freely and, and openly and we can see the future that you're, as you just said, like bundling that up in a nice piece of string that others can see it um, and help us um, with the impact that we're called to to make in, in, in the world. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's it's quite an interesting space to um, work in. So if there were listeners that were curious about that, I'd really encourage them to go and look into social enterprise. Um, I mean, in the past, I've worked in uh, a corporate business all the way through to um, like the charitable trust, um, which is like completely not for profit. And um, yeah, it's, it's really a, a meeting of the minds right in the middle where you get the best of both worlds. So it's a really nice structure to be working in for sure. Mm. And and for here, I'm not sure about in, in New Zealand, but here in Australia, it's something that is, um, it's growing. Uh, it's, it's absolutely growing. But I know in the US uh, and uh, to an extent Canada, uh, this is a real, like there's, there's you know, a trillion dollars globally uh, uh, in um, in social enterprises uh, and whole fields of um, uh, whole whole sort of sectors of the economy that are in um, um, supporting social enterprises um, and uh, yeah it's it's quite rigorous what we what we need to do uh to um to, to be registered and all that kind of stuff to uh and then demonstrate measure our impact demonstrate what we're what we're doing this is sounding very linked in isn't it it's 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 like you know very businessy <laughs> fair, fair. So you're always going to get that with me though like business business and my thing i'm in the business of business um but business for good is better yes yes me too me too. I, I love that. Business for good is so much better uh, and so much more rewarding, I have to say. Um, and uh, so desperately trying to reel this back from like a LinkedIn kind of Q&A session. Um, but, yep. But um, mainly, mainly because I think if I was, um, you know, tuning in to, 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 to something like that, I'd be like, okay, that's really great. But I want to um, I want to ask some 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 questions about um, like how 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 comfortable are you now having you know worked here uh, at Humans Connecting um, now since last year? How comfortable are you now, sort of, with loneliness and um, and yeah, kind of sitting with with loneliness. I'd say super comfortable. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Me, me, and my uh, connection, we're good. We're good. We're friends. Um, and and like like most people that are working with organisations, like we've all been through it. We've all been through loneliness, so that makes it okay to sit with because you you know it. So yeah. Yeah. So one of the things like, you know, that 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 there's there's things like events and, and situations from you know parts of our lives that one of the things that, that creates loneliness, and I, and I say this a bit, is that loneliness is often an unintended consequence of decisions that we've made um as a um as a result of something that's happened in in our lives, and you know, an example is that something happens in our uh, in our adolescence, say you know, at, at, at school, and we have that kind of response within us of like, well, that that was 
awful. That was a, a, a horrendous mm. experience. I don't want that to happen again. To keep me safe, I'm going to not say anything, for instance, a really common one. I'm not going to say anything because I don't want people to laugh at me again. I don't want people to... So, you know, until I say something, until I know that I can get it right and no one's going to judge me badly, I'm not going to say something. Yeah. Yeah. And it works. It's a great strategy because it works and it keeps on working, but then an unintended consequence is that we don't actually say anything. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and sometimes that decision, I think, is uh, what we deem at the time to be the safest way to go about navigating things. Uh, that certainly was the case in, with me and in my experience with loneliness. It was that... Um, oh, shit, I just really don't want to uh, have to bring other people into this experience with me. So I'm just going to sit here with it because it's easier if I just deal with it myself than um, including other people in this. And, um, yeah, at the time you think, oh, that's the easiest way to go about things. Oh, upon reflection, you kind of think, oh, could have done that differently. Yeah. I feel like what you just said was was really um, was really powerful in the sense of mm. how you know an event happens and yeah. how we, like however old we are when that event happens like you know whether we're a child whether we're you know a teenager whether we're mm. an adult uh, and our response is I you know I'm just gonna like deal with this myself because it's easier um, it's safer easier less messy, uh, less inconvenient for someone. It, le it doesn't upset people or things. So I'm just going to deal yeah. with this myself. And, and what you, what I've heard you say there is that, you know, for some events um, that it is easier, like it, it has been easier for you. You like to like to do what so many of us do is respond just quietly and um yeah and yeah. and and then it doesn't it works until it doesn't it gets you out of that situation it gets you like moving beyond that that initial event but then yeah. we get to we get to a time when sometimes that very inconvenient time when we realize that what we've been doing to cope with that is now has now become more of an issue than the issue itself. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, and oh absolutely, absolutely. And I think it also uh snowballs as well. So if we uh step back to um my experience and my story, but you know, it's just a story and I think that it's quite relatable to to people, to other people, um, was really when I was entering into true adulthood. So um, in my late teens, early 20s, and I just really didn't take to adulthood that well. So I had a brilliant childhood, and I, um, you know, this fellow, I've got a huge family, and my parents were um, really good at taking on um, other children from my family. So I had, um, we have a term here in New Zealand um, for Māori called whāngai, so it's sort of like a a family adoption and um my parents were all about just buying my brothers and sisters for at, at our house and they'd stay for anywhere from a few months to like many years um so that what i grew up in as a child was like a really connective family we just like you didn't really need mates you made friends because you had this time to practice in-house um <laughs> but you know it was really <laughs> it was really good and um you know I had a really happy childhood and then when it came to like moving into my own flat for the first time and um all your, your other friends sort of go to university and you're out there on your own I just didn't um didn't really cope that well with it and then made some really bad choices so for me bad choices look like getting into um addiction and then proceeding from that crime and being around people who were actively involved in um, addiction and criminal activities. So loneliness in that scene, um, when, you're, when you are in addiction, is 
is, a, is an isolation that you choose to have. And there's a couple of reasons why you choose to have that isolation, right? The first one's probably that you don't want anybody to know what you're doing. So you, you really don't reach out to connect. And then the other part of it is that you have these pseudo connections with people where, um, yeah, you're my mate and we get high together and we go to the pub all weekend and we drink together, but I don't actually want to know who you really are and I definitely don't want you to really know who I am. Um, and a couple of reasons for that. It makes you feel too vulnerable. There's, um, you know, implications for, um, you know, being a part of, of some naughty activities. And so you certainly don't want your name being passed on to authorities and things like that. Um, and you you build up a facade of what you're presenting to the world, which is generally nothing like what you really are and who you who who you really are and how you think and, and what you're about. That kind of goes out the window. So that was my first experience with loneliness. And it was it wasn't just isolated to me. It was it was everybody that I was hanging out with. It was the people that I was partying with every weekend. We all kind of just we were mates, we knew each other whatever, but we were not connected. And it was a super, super lonely place to be. And so to swing that back to what you were saying about um, that not speaking up, not reaching out for connection, that's one of the reasons we do it, right? If I've got secrets that I'm holding on to, I think that we've seen some things with other uh, clients that we've worked with at Humans Connecting around Maybe there is something that's going on in their personal, their private life that they really need to keep secret. Um, for some people, that might be that um, they're a part of the rainbow community, but they're not out. So mm. they've got to have two versions of themselves. Um, they they might not align with what their community is actually doing and is about, but so they have to keep that facade up so that they can still belong. But it severs the connection, right? Because... Um, you're not being true to yourself, so how how could you ever possibly try and be true to someone else and and have an authentic relationship? So yeah, that was that was me um, for a couple of years and um, had a whirlwind of a time. Um, not all of it was horrible, but not all of it was great. And then um, getting to a point where um, I was done with that scene, I was um, I was done with. Um, using substances to mask that sadness and mask that anxiety and mask that depression. I was just done with it. And um, so I kind of just hit this impasse of like, we're just going to keep going and doing what we're doing and probably end up in an early grave or we're going to go to what we know is right and 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 try something different than what I've been doing for the last couple of years. And that's, yeah, that was my little story. But I think there's a bit of overlay. I don't think that I'm, pre I'm that isolated in that story, I think there's a couple of themes there that just blanket out over a whole lot of people. Yeah, yeah, you did. You did a a a really good job. At, like not job. No. You did an awesome job there um, in taking that step up and back from your own experience and making it sort of uh, relatable to people. However, you know the things are. And and in terms of that, like one of the one of the things there um, is that the sense of disconnection, the sense of isolation, even when surrounded by other people, you were hanging out with people. You were like you know you you ostensibly were not alone, but you were yeah. lonely. And um, listener viewer. I get this all the time and we here at Humans Connecting get this all the time. I cannot possibly be lonely because I'm never alone. Um, loneliness, uh, and you, you, if you listen to uh, episode four with Professor Joanna Badcock, um, which uh, dropped just before this episode, um, uh, we were talking about loneliness and social isolation. Being alone is social isolation and that is very different you could be socially isolated and not lonely at all you could be very happy in your own company and you know happy happy little clam and all like that's fantastic but loneliness is a subjective state um and we can 
And this is this is part of the, the biggest challenge that we have here at Humans Connecting in reaching you, viewer and, uh, and, and listener. And I suspect that you've made the leap already uh, to this because you're here sitting with us uh, for, for this chat. But what, what can happen is that that confusion between alone and lonely uh, gets gets blurred because they're often interchanged and and um, and stuff. But one of the it's it's particularly cruel. Loneliness is particularly cruel when we're surrounded by people. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's also um, it it just it snowballs, right? Because um, the more you're around these inauthentic connections, these pseudo connections, the the worse it gets. Because um, you just get further away from the actual human relationship. Um, yeah, we see it in workplaces a lot. Where people is like, I'm at work with people all day, every day, and you know, you can still be very, very isolated and lonely. So, um, yeah. It's an interesting concept. Definitely true. Yeah, yeah. And one of the one of the things in in um in your story there, Mona, in in terms of looking for, um, just sort of unpacking some of those commonalities, is that you you shared bravely and courageously, and I think that you're bloody awesome for doing it, <laughs> right? Um, uh, you know about um, substance abuse. Uh, and um, you know illicit drug um, and, um, and 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 alcohol, but we can substitute that. And and listener, I'm, I'm, I, this might be, um, you know, large parts of Mona's story might actually be. You'd be like, "Yep, that's me." It just didn't happen in New Zealand. It happened where I am in the world, but that's largely my story too. Um, at a time of change. Um, Things didn't go well for me, and I responded in a way that led me to feeling very lonely. And how we respond with that, part of that is, is the numbing and the avoidance. And a really yes, common one, me. a really common one, and so common that I do it, like not did it, I still do it. This is my big tell. Is work. Yeah, yeah. I think another one that is really easy to get pulled into, and it's kind of sickly funny, weirdly funny, because it's what we're doing now, but it's filling your world with these pseudo connections where you listen to a podcast where someone had a had a conversation or you watched a video on YouTube where somebody was speaking to the screen and then you you're registering that as a connection, but you're not, you're nearly there, but it's not quite. Yeah. It's not quite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Viewer, listener, as much as we would love to have this as a chat with you as well, like, you know, <laughs> we, they, they talk on TV about, you know, uh, removing the fourth wall um, uh, and stuff. If we could remove the fourth wall and have you, have you joining us, this would be a cracking chat. Um, but I want to, yeah. Yeah, and 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 you know we can we can look for that. We can look for that connection and fall agonizingly short in so many ways. Yeah. So like consuming content, um, but also um, like social media, anything that has us passively can like consuming content is um, is really isn't isn't going to scratch that itch, and we all have that itch. Um, and other, other ways of doing this, like, you know, but, but work is socially celebrated, um, and rewarded, um, and, oh, no, 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 don't, don't interrupt them because they're really busy. Um, and, oh, she's really busy. She's going places, look out. Um, but also like, I, I get a little suspicious, uh, of someone who is that perpetual motion machine because uh, that's, that's me. I recognize my own pattern in other people. Um, but then, you know, there's there's the, um, 
uh, there's there's the working out, there's the travel, there's the shopping, there's gambling, there's all sorts of things. Um, and I just want to say, can we please suspend the judgment? Can we please suspend the judgment? Because the judgment doesn't help anybody. And judgment, um, you know, if if someone, um, you know, is is doing something that you don't agree with, don't judge. They're doing the best that they can with what they've got. And yeah, judgment, yeah, exactly. when it comes to loneliness, judgment, uh, judgment feeds loneliness and curiosity kills judgment. So to start yeah. loneliness, we need to feed curiosity. It is an analogy you could apply with food as well, where, um, you know, telling somebody that they shouldn't eat chocolate is not going to motivate that person to start eating a salad. All they're going to want to do is hit that chocolate. So, you yeah. know, it's it's how you approach um, things with others, but also how you approach them with yourself. I think um, yeah. we see it with our client base. There's some people who, um, like, they've already nailed um, the fact that they they know that they that they've got loneliness going on in their life. They're actively trying to do something about it, and yet they're their own harshest critics. So. Um, Yes. And and then they will make excuses for others. They'll, you know, they're like, oh, I don't want to judge this person. They've probably got these things going on, but then we'll just nail themselves. They'll always be the hardest on themselves. So, yeah, yeah. a bit of kindness. Yeah. Yeah. On that, how do you practice self kindness now? Knowing, knowing that, you know, um, that time in your life that you just, um, that you, 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 you shared with us. You know, and and again, I'm just ratcheting, uh, like tallying the that up in the column of how how I think that you're awesome. Um, and um, but in sharing that, what's how how do you practice self kindness now? Yeah, so I think coming out of that. Um, was having to be really intentional about everything I do. Um, and so that became really intentional about the relationships that I did have. So uh, I had to eradicate a whole lot of um, these relationships and connections that I had with people that um, weren't part of my of my journey um, and, and instead replaced that with reconnecting with my family, um, reconnecting with the um, good friendships and relationships in my life and and also like reconnecting with myself. So when I was in that sort of whirlwind, I definitely didn't have a sense of self. I had a sense of facade. So I had yes. built this image of what I was. So I, that's what I was living. Getting out of that looks a lot like sitting with yourself and thinking about what are the things about me that I like? What are the things about me that I would like to like so I wasn't there yet and I needed to work towards it so becoming really intentional about these are the things that are important to me so this is what I'm going to do I'm going to I'm going to turn up to Sano family dinners I'm going to make sure that I'm connecting with people I'm going to stop and have that chat with the friend at the supermarket um, I will if I see a couple of colleagues that are having their morning tea break or their smoko break and I'll, I'll go and interact with them if it's appropriate. So being really intentional about connections and then um, you you get a kickback from this though, like a real sick kickback because the more you offer connection, the more you get connection and it just grows. And there's absolutely a brain chemical hit that you get when you get it right. And and so that's that's what you do. You just go and you feed you feed that beast because the beast now wants to connect. It knows how to do it. Um, I've had to learn. I've had to um, even just learning uh, about my own personality. So I mean, Phil will know this. I'm obsessed with personality tests and working out what everybody else is. And uh, neuroscience really interests me uh, about these brain connections and how they work because. Um, you might have your way of connecting with somebody, but that's not necessarily the way they connect. And so I yeah. get I get a lot of pleasure from working it out and being like, okay, this is how I talk to that person. Uh, this is this is how we get to have our chats. So that's that's been for me 
what it's about in terms of the connection. That self-kindness, though, besides the connection, a lot of it is um, is around the narrative that I have of my own life story. So do I want to be a uh, mona who doesn't put the time into friends, who doesn't prioritise her health, who hasn't talked to her parents for several months? No, I don't want to be that. So it's it's prioritising what I want the story to be. And I try to keep in my mind, like, what is your legacy? What do you leave behind? Because um, the... Somebody once spoke about, you know, what are the stories people will will speak about at your funeral? And I thought, well, who who would turn up to your funeral? It's probably, you know, the extended question of that. And um, keeping that in mind, I try to, um, yeah, be really intentional about, like, that positive life that I'm living. And, um, I mean, it's going really well. Well... Again, thank you. There are so many nuggets of wisdom in in what you just said, and, and particularly, you said that um, you know the, the the it's a beast. The connection becomes a beast. That once you know how to feed it, like you continually want to feed it, um, and on the flip side, so is loneliness. Loneliness and and um, I'm just going to massacre this uh, terribly, but you know, there's there's two wolves at our door, uh, and you know, one's one's connection and one's loneliness. Which one do you choose to feed? Because you can only feed one. Um, and you know, when loneliness keeps you safe, keeps you, yeah. Um, and 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 you know, I said with uh, with Professor Badcock uh, in the last episode that. You know, it is, it is, you know, loneliness sort of, there's a point where loneliness can can lapse from that temporary stage, which gets you through that, uh, that uncomfortable moment safely. Then it can become like a default state, like chronic state. Um, and it can persist for many, 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 well, for, for years, certainly, you know, in, in, in my case, it was, it had been for years as well. And it, it kind of, you know, becomes like part of the furniture within us. Um, and it's just how things are. And you sort of begin to not really notice it. But one of the things that you you just said there, Mona, is, is, is fantastic. And I just really wanted to underline it. You choose, you choose deliberately. You choose connection. And, you know, you, you you know, at work or whatever, like, you know, you can power through the supermarket. Like, you know, yeah. a, a demon with the trolley and, and you know, or the, or the, 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 the shopping basket and, you know, getting your stuff for dinner or doing the weekly shop or whatever and just sort of put headphones on and, and power through the shopping and stuff. Or... You know, you could choose to be at the supermarket and if there's someone who you know who's there, you can stop and have a chat with them and, and things like that. Um, choose to, like, bond with someone over, I don't know, like the, you know, the freshness of the avocados or something like that. I don't know. Like, Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily need to be somebody that you know. Um, no. Like, we talk about... The, the connection beast but I also think that's kind of like it's like the secret once you know the secret you can't unknow the secret of being super kind to someone who you don't know at the supermarket is a really easy way to test the waters of your new connection strategy so actually stopping and making eye contact with your checkout person or maybe the avocado person because there's not so many checkouts nowadays anyway um, yeah. stopping making the eye contact and then and saying, like, I hope you have a good day. Genuinely mean it and move on. Take nothing else away from the conversation. But give that connection to somebody and then move on with your day. You know you did a nice thing. Whether or not they it flags with them is irrelevant. You're putting these things into place into your mind and your brain, because it has that muscle memory, is going to remember what that connection was like and it's going to start doing it more and more. 
good practice. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And and that's that's the key word there. This is practice. And there's some days where it's going to be like super easy and it goes well. And then there's some days where it like, I don't know, I, I will share that, you know, some days I go to do it and I don't know, like some days I'm very erudite. Uh, most days I can, you know, string a sentence together. I can say like, I, 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 I have learned German um, and I'm learning Tadeo Māori right now as well. And viewer, listener, if you don't, uh, if you've not seen um, Tadeo Māori written, um, or if um, you know you, you're not that familiar with German, there are things called compound nouns, where what can be uh, like 10, 15 words in English to describe something kind of just gets added <laughs> one to another. Uh, in a long series of nouns uh, in German and Tadeo. And it's awesome. It's I, I love it. It's kind of like, you know, Lego, Lego bricks of words uh, added to each other to form like this big sort of building of a word. And there's a real trick to it. Like when you look at it in, in, um, in, in German or, or Tadeo, like you need to know where the syllable breaks are. And once you know where the syllable breaks are and with practice, you get to like know like, where the different words are and then it's far easier to say there are some days where those big long fuck off words um are so easy to say and then there's others that i'm like i cannot like say a simple syllable right um today and some days are better than others um and there are going to be some times because this is a practice just like learning a language you're learning the language of connection and, you know, when we're dealing with human connection, it's not just you connecting with others, but it's others receiving your connection and responding as well. And some other people are out of that practice. What we're not to do is be discouraged. Yeah, yeah. Or look past that uh, loneliness and, and see the human. I don't yeah. know what people are going through. Yeah. Um, and it's none of your business. So just keep it moving. Mm. Keep it moving with your own experimentation about things. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, you um, know, you choose it, you think, choose connection there. That's bloody, like, that's, yeah. that, I just, you know, really want to underline that, but you keep going. Yeah. But I also think, like, to, to take, take on to that as well, it's it's that concept of no one owes you connection uh, but you. So that's why you're doing this. This is for you. This is so that you can look after yourself. This is part of your self-care. It's a foundation of your mental health. We, we know that. This, the data shows that. Connection and loneliness is one of those key pillars that holds everything else up. So you're doing this for you. You reach out. You make these connections. doesn't work. Sweet ears. Keep it moving. Connect with someone else. But you owe yourself that. It's for you. You get bonus points for adding in the sweet as um, uh, there. It's like, <laughs> kiwi as, uh, uh, keep it going. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, some days this is really hard. Some days this is really hard. And when, when we're on the, on, on, in the depths of a loneliness experience, mm. these kind of conversations could be like, your your mind, your heart. No, 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 your mind, not your heart. But your mind's like, no, nah, I could not possibly do this. Like, it's all well yeah. and good for you. I can't possibly go yeah. and, you know, talk to anyone because they will just do this, that, and the other thing, and I will feel bad. What do you say to that? If, if you know, like looking yeah. to break down the fourth well, wall I would, here. I think for... Well, for that for that person I would I would really talk to them about it's like it's it's like boiling water. So you've got your different settings on the stove top, right? So one day you might you might be cooking at like full number eight on the stove and, and things are boiling there. So the water's so hot. But on those days where you just plain don't feel like it, it should be at a one because you need to keep the water simmering. So yeah, we understand that you're not, you don't have the capacity for 
all of the reasons you don't have the capacity to go out and make a huge connection today. But you could do something. And maybe that something is that you don't feel like going to family dinner. It will just exhaust you. You've got that one uncle who's going to be there and he gets on your nerves and he's got all these weird political views that you don't align with and it's always a bit of a stressful time. Okay, we acknowledge that. That, that is true. That is a fact for you. But what you could do is also communicate with the people in the family rather than say, hey, I'm not coming to dinner or not turn up at all and don't communicate at all and and connect and just say, hey, I'm just not feeling up to it. I'm really sorry that I can't come to dinner. I won't, I won't make it tonight. I hope you guys have lots of fun. Think of me when you're having a laugh at the dinner table. There you go. That was your live, that was your setting level number one. You just did the smallest thing and you're still going to keep that, that water boiling. Cause that's, it's about keeping it going, keeping the role going. As soon as you stop and you take a day off connection, it's going to be two days off connection. It's probably a little bit like sobriety. Just, you know, decide, oh, well, I'm off the wagon today. Well, I'm probably going to stay off the wagon tomorrow. And maybe I'll stay off the wagon for until next week. But you've got to keep it moving. You've got to keep that momentum up, for sure. That'd be my advice. That's awesome advice. That's fantastic. It's, you know, some, yeah, your capacity and, and, and meet your, it, it's in our content advisory. Meet yourself where you are and how you are yeah. right now. Um, and some days like putting, putting, um, you know, putting the, 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 the pot of water back to one, that might be the day that, you know, you go and, and run yourself a bath and, you know, I don't know, like put a bath bomb in there or, or I don't know, like treat yourself nice, yeah, go to yeah. bed early, um, you know, give yourself the like a, a good night's sleep. Give yourself like some yeah, sure. some some you know a, a nice meal where you know you know treat yourself nicely and and meet yourself where you are and 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 then the next day like you know you can can assess and go okay like but yes it, it, it's it's got to be like on the roll uh, on the on the simba uh, on the simmer at least yeah yeah and. And that checking in with your yourself, I think that is connection. You know, it's looking back at the day and being like, oh, that was so shit. And I just, I couldn't be bothered with anything. What, you know, reflect on what caused that. Um, what, what, what are you going to do differently next time? Not, are you going to do something differently? What are you going to do differently? It's got to be something. Um, yeah. You know, you know, this experiment didn't work out for you this week. Go try something else. What is, what is that? Yeah. That's you're you're answering like the the the, the question that, that I wanted to ask, and I'm still I'm still so really grateful. I, I just wanted before moving on to like the connections connection question, I wanted to move on to like I just wanted to say thank you so much for sharing part of your loneliness, um, like your loneliness story, and I want to acknowledge that it was done in a way that felt easy but I want to acknowledge that it takes a lot of work to get to that point where there is an ease uh, and and comfort of sharing your story so I just want to say thank you I, I see that and I just think it, it's amazing it's 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 courage right there that is courage Thank you. Yeah, I never really think of it like that. Um, I, I'm i quite subscribed to the idea of just radical honesty because um, I think that radical honesty is on the other side of the coin from shame. And, um, yeah, I, I recommend it. It's done me really well. Yeah, I hear this a fair bit in in like the 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 work that that I do here, and you know, being radically honest. I'm like, can we just be honest? Like, why does radical have to be like a blood sport? <laughs> like, why does it have to be like MMA yeah. level honesty? Um, can we can we just 
Well, Can we just I have think it there as honesty? Degrees of it. Yeah. Yeah. I think there are degrees of it though where there's like acceptable honesty. So that's like we don't talk about mum and dad's divorce and we don't talk about our um poor relationship with this person and we don't talk about how much we hate our jobs, but we can talk about all the good things really honestly. And that's probably what um social media looks like. So what people's um you know, Facebook posts that we're like, I'm being really honest about what's going on. I took this picture, everyone looks really happy, but um, but I will never be honest about the bad things. And so I think that talking about the bad things is has got to be a part of it. And it's that's not the natural way of things. Maybe it will be one day, but I don't think yeah. I don't think we're there yet. Look at you, like you're you're blazing the trail. It's awesome. And and yes, I and I I call that being authentic. Uh, and if you can't be authentic with yourself in the first instance, um, you know, not everybody has earned the right to know everything and, and know every thought that is happening in our in our minds. Yeah. Um, uh, and and um, but I feel someone has earned the right to hear the story. Someone has earned the right to be there to receive the things that you've been carrying for such a long time, someone has earned that right. Um, and I simply won't have, I, I, I don't accept that there's no one um, because someone, someone has. Um, and, you know, when, particularly when it comes to loneliness and, and um, just a, a quick sidebar there, loneliness thrives, as I just said, with, you know, when we, when we, um, when we judge it, when we're secretive, um, and um, and and for very good reason because it keeps us safe, but it also becomes you know the 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 walls of the castle that keep us safe are so good at keeping us safe that they become our prison too. We can't leave them easily. Um, and so, but someone, someone, somewhere has earned that right, um, and uh, and and we we need to let ourselves in in the first instance, um, and uh, and and have that kind of authentic, real, radically honest conversation with ourselves in the first instance of like, okay, this is not working out so well for me anymore. I get to learn other ways of coping and I get to learn other ways of living because this is this the the usefulness of this strategy yeah. is at its end. Yeah, totally. It's like gifting yourself a makeover of your life. And you can do that. Yeah. You don't have to live your life how it is today. You could do something different. Everyone can. Yeah. Um yeah. So Mona, I, I've got like a question for you. So, and you'll find out my question for Mona right after this quick break. Hey, it's Phil here, and it's my turn to do one of these ads. Research tells us that humans most notice loneliness during times of change. And because we know that, we here at Humans Connecting can meet you where you are at times of change in your life. We've created videos to support you through changes that you may experience through your life. And we call these videos Connection Inspirations. These Connection Inspirations contain ideas to support you where you are and how you are through some change in your life. You'll get some ideas, you'll get some hints, you'll get some tips to support you and navigate through times of change in your life. We've got a video about how you can stay connected to yourself, to those most important to you and to the world around you in middle age. We've got another video on how you can reconnect with your significant other in a relationship. We've got another video on how you can stay connected when you're moving house. And if you're part of the awesome Rainbow community, we've got a connection inspiration video for you to stay connected after coming out and if you are in the closet. 
There are more Connection Inspirations uploaded regularly with content coming up soon about supporting you through a breakup and many, many more. Tap the link in the episode description to be taken to our Connection Inspirations page where you will be getting high value support and ideas so you thrive through change in life. So go check out our Connection Inspirations. There's a link in the episode description that will take you right there. And we can't wait to support you. Welcome back. You want to get comfortable because Mona's about to say something amazing. You know, celebrating your your just awesomeness there with, with your courage. Since you know joining the team here at Humans Connecting, what have what have you learned about connection? Oh, good question. I kind of had a head start, Phil, because I've known you for a while now, and it's been a part of our conversations. <laughs> um, I you're painting me as someone who can't turn this off, which I I don't know, can't, but um, <laughs> like you know me, you're seeing right through me. Um. But I think one thing that I have learned about connection, but it's more, I didn't so much understand how crippling loneliness was for some people. And and that's been one of the big things that um, I've learned working with Humans Connecting was like, shit, this is a way, way bigger problem than I thought. So I knew, I knew that, I mean, can't argue with the data, um, but also, like from my own experiences, I've been around tons of lonely people, so I knew it was a thing. But um, I didn't, I didn't know how crippling it was for many, many people. And um, so that's been one thing I've, I've definitely, it's opened my eyes up. Um, the flip side of that is that I think some of the people we've encountered, um, they've been on this, they've been on the edge of this loneliness is forever I'll never be good at this I I simply cannot connect I don't know how to do it I'm not good at it and um treating loneliness like it's a life sentence and then seeing the light that it's actually not yeah. it is there's, there's strategies there's people that are willing to help you there's there's content creators there's um researchers uh thought leaders that are out there actively trying to help you to eliminate loneliness from your life or reduce it in, in some capacity. So um, I think my thing for connection is um, realizing how big it is, the concept that loneliness is not a life sentence. So you don't just, you don't have to stop there where I'm lonely and I'll, I'll never meet another person I connect with ever in my life again. It's not true. Um, that fact is something that I've definitely, like it's been solidified since I've worked at Humans Connecting that loneliness is not a life sentence. You you are free to do more. Just putting that as a pause there, because uh, for, for for editing Phil, um, because that is that's uh, viewer listener. That's what's going on social media. That's the uh, <laughs> that's that's going to be the real uh, because you smashed it like you did. You really did. Okay. And, um, and yeah, it is absolutely not a life sentence. Yeah. I thought of that in the car. Oh, the best ideas come when you're driving or in the shower or something like that, when your brain's in neutral. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, 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 I really do love that. And, and in hearing that, I just want to let you know, and, and viewer, listener, you know, I am a loneliness thought leader. Um, what that means exactly, like we're working that out as and it's a day-to-day -day thing. Like it, it's, um, but I, I simply want to say that there's a part of me that eight years ago, eight years ago when, you know, my, my kind of loneliness experience was really coming to a head and I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified. And, and as I shared with Pete in the first episode of the podcast, like I was terrified of falling into the void. 
the loneliness was this void within me and I was terrified of falling into it. I was also terrified of going the other way. What would life look like if I wasn't feeling these thoughts, uh, feeling yeah. these feelings and thinking these thoughts? Like, and and it was kind of like, all right, I'm trying to walk this impossible balance, uh, walk this impossible yeah, yeah. line between, you know, there's crocodiles on one side and alligators on the other. Which one do I prefer to fall into? Yeah, um, and and there's those other hooks, right? The other hooks on on if you if you decide, okay, I'm going to tackle loneliness and I'm going to change it and I'm going to become a connected person. But these other hooks that scare you even more. Um, I know for me it was that like I'm going to have to start being honest about what the fuck I've been up to for the last three years. And um, as I mentioned, I'm really close with my family and had kept them out of the loop as much as possible. I'm sure I wasn't that good at it pretty strung out a lot of the time but in my mind I had I'd done a really good job of lying and so then I had to come come back and and tell the truth and fess up and be honest and maybe get chastised a little bit for what I'd been what I'd been doing to myself so you know you there, there are going to be those little hooks where you're like oh yeah I, I do want to keep but I, I simply couldn't have that conversation with my mum and then that's it. That's the end of the. That's the end of the yarn. That's the end of the story. So getting pushing through that, right? Like tackle the alligator. Well, don't tackle an alligator, but well, I don't know. You, Australians look like you're all good at that. A a, a stuffed one, a, a toy, a, a toy one, perhaps like could, could wrestle that. Um, but I I, I want to. <laughs> There's no real equivalent in New Zealand because there's no like real dangerous animal over there. Um, no, no, our national but... bird doesn't even fly. Yeah, <laughs> we're safe. The walking, the walking basketball. <laughs> um, and um, but uh, uh, which um, yeah, kiwis. If you haven't heard them, viewer and listener, like Google Google the sound that a kiwi makes, like the bird, not <laughs> not people from New Zealand, but the bird. Um, they don't make that sound in our collective imagination, uh, I'm sure. Um, but I just wanted to, um, what, um, what you've said there speaks to the fear of connection. And um, the irony is, and it's an uncomfortable irony, it's an irony, but it's truth, in that the loneliness, the loneliness that we feel holds the key for the connection that we're missing. And the connection that we seek and the connection that we absolutely deserve, that path starts when we pass through the gates of loneliness. And stopping a moment as you did, it's like, this is not gonna end well for me. There's a couple of options here. One is an early grave. One is, you know, run-ins with the law potentially. Um, and another one is, um, you know, not either of those two. Yeah, yeah. But the mind will create many reasons why you shouldn't do something. It's a little like going to the gym, right? It's cold outside. I don't know where my shoes are. Oh, I probably won't find a car park. I'm just not going to go. You've got to ignore it. Got to ignore yeah. it. And to 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 put a little bit of um proof in the pudding there, uh, when I did start becoming more honest and truthful about what it was that I'd been doing, um, the people that I was worried about and the um the issues that I thought would crop up never have. So um you know me being honest with my family, um turned into not just authentic conversations about myself, but also authentic conversations within the family. It was sort of like, well, all right, well, one of us is telling the truth here, so we're all going to start doing it. We're all going to become truth tellers about things. And um, my family I have never been closer. It's great. Um, I was worried about having these conversations on um, just so that potential employers would, would, you know, hearing about, my past um but 
A, no one's ever cared, and B, if they've cared to know, um, it's always been a really positive um, conversation and, and elicited more truth from them. So um, mm -hmm. that's that's my evidence that taking the leap is worthwhile. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and there are dozens of times in my life where taking the scary option with the time uh, versus like staying safe, small, which was feeding my loneliness. Like the worst case scenario didn't work out and indeed it and turned out far better um, than, I, than I'd uh, ever hoped that I could ever allow myself to, 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 to hope um, when I was in that, 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 that place of just feeling so unseen and, you know, not allowing myself to be, to be me. Um, so I feel that is such a powerful way to, to wind up the, 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 the chat in the sense that this is oftentimes loneliness itself, speaking of loneliness to people who have earned the right to hear your story, actually is a source of connection. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, there's there's absolutely content that's gonna, that'll be coming out um, over uh, the next little while here at Humans Connecting um, on a quick podcast about you know not using your loneliness as a way of like essentially trauma bonding with with people. Um, there is a balance there, absolutely, <laughs> um, which is why I've put the caveat in a few times with people who have earned the right to hear your story. Um, yeah. that's, that's the important caveat there. Um, Mona, it's turning into a bit of a, 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 a thing. We can blame Pete. He started it in the first, uh, in the first episode, but whenever there's a guest on the podcast and I like, you know, your family, your, your, your humans connecting family, like, <laughs> you know, I don't know if we can really call you a guest, but you are, what's you, you've, you've just been dropping wisdom, like you know, like the, the wisdom fairy all over the place uh, in our chat. What What's a final piece of advice that you would give to the listener who, listener and the viewer on YouTube, who is in the midst of a loneliness experience and is listening and going, yeah, this seems really good, but, or no, this is like, God, they're full of shit. Um, and I couldn't do this. Is that, this won't work for me. What's a piece of advice that you would, you know, give to them if they were sitting yeah. here in real life with us? And sort of on the on the fence, I guess. Um, mm. My, if somebody was on the, if somebody, so I guess, for, so what we're assuming here is that they've got through the piece of the puzzle where, um, they have to acknowledge that, that they've experienced loneliness. So I think that's a hurdle in itself. But once you've got there, you're sort of sitting on the fence of like, do I go out and try and um, connect or do I not? I, my advice to that person is that it bears no cost to experiment with connection. So there is going to be no real feasible, tangible downside to you going out for a week and just experimenting with connection and then assessing how that feels. Whether you think it's a crock of shit or you think, yeah, it sounds really cool, but maybe not for me because I'm really scared. No, both those sides are valid. That's cool. How you feel is how you feel. Try it. Experiment with it. And you can always go back to doing whatever it is that is not connecting for you. <laughs> That's your life. That's your journey. That's going to be your legacy. You know, one day people will talk about that at your funeral or there'll be no people at your funeral at all. Um, you choose and just do that experiment. That would be my advice because I think that um, we can give all of these these um, inspirational um, social media drops and little bits of wisdom and stuff like that, but nothing beats proving it to yourself that, A, you're worth the connection because that's you owe you connection. 
and it be it's it's not going to be the hardest thing you ever have to do. So making that connection is not the hardest thing that you're ever going to do. And yeah, if you have that, if you have that, turn the light bulb on. I think you're away. Really nice. I'm I'm not writing that down, and I'll be like, mm, according to sources, that humans connecting. You've got to run the experiment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've got to try. Got to try. And it doesn't. And if it doesn't work for you, and you're like, nah, fuck connecting, hate it. All right, sweet. That's obviously not for you this week, this year, this yeah. lifetime. All right, it's, we're not here to convert people who 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 don't want to follow the code path or don't want to get on board with the program. That's cool. But um, I'm very confident that what we're trying to help people do is worthwhile. Yeah. I'm very confident. Yeah. Me too. So I'm really glad that you hear for that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I, I've said it a couple of times already in this episode, but I just want to say this to, to, to wrap this up. I've simply lost count of the ways that I think that you're awesome. I'm so very grateful that you're here. I'm so very grateful that you, you are here. Uh, you are here for this podcast. You are here in the team and that you're here, like you are here for humans wherever they are in the world, whatever they do and however they are identified as humans to be more them. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Phil. Yeah, no, that's cool. I'm really um, I'm stoked to help and I hope that, um, that there's, there's a couple of uh, glimmers of glitter in this, in this conversation that might help some people along. That would, that would just make my day. Yeah, thanks. Wasn't that amazing? So much wisdom being so casually dispensed. I want to say something really quickly before I wrap this up about vulnerability. Moana was hugely vulnerable during that conversation. And witnessing vulnerability is always inspiring. And I bet you feel connected to Moana in some way and on some level right now. The thing with vulnerability is that it's easy to talk about conceptually. It's easy to talk about the idea of vulnerability. It's also easy to talk about how important it is to be vulnerable as a step to moving through loneliness towards feeling connected. But doing vulnerability and being vulnerable is tough. And the discomfort of being vulnerable is something that you'll wrestle with when you begin to sit with your loneliness. We've got two things for you right now about vulnerability and discomfort. The first one is my intellectual crush, Dr. Brene Brown says that we see vulnerability as a strength in others, but as a weakness in ourselves. That's really important to remember. And secondly, this one's about discomfort. Being or discomfort, being uncomfortable is okay. Moving through loneliness often requires you to get uncomfortable for a little while. And the connection that you seek, and I see this time and time and time again, and within myself, I remind myself of this all the time, that the connection that you're seeking is on the other side of that discomfort. So as Mona suggested in that episode, run your connection experiment, get the feedback and then assess the results and then give it yet another go. Here at Humans Connecting, we've got tools that you can use to support yourself to do that, to run the experiment, to sit with the results and, and reassess. So you can take a lot of the guesswork out of your connection experimenting process. And while discomfort is okay, pain is not. And it's important that you know the difference between the two of those, discomfort and pain, for you. If running the experiment causes you pain, either mentally or emotional pain, please seek professional support. You're worthy of that. To underline that, discomfort is okay. 
We're right here to help you through the, that discomfort. But pain is not. And you're worthy of seeking and getting that professional support. You're absolutely worthy of that. So thanks for joining us for this episode. We'd love to hear what you thought about it. So please comment, uh, feel free to comment on YouTube and on our social channels. And be sure to check our website, humansconnecting.org, for details of how we can support you get the connection that you need and deserve. And there are also details about how we can help you create your connected workplace, where the humans within your workplace and you can truly thrive. Also, if you're a business and are looking for ways to support humans feel more connected and want to have a positive social impact, please check the link in the episode description and partner with us. That partnership could look like advertising on future episodes of this podcast or collaborating with us in other ways. Thanks again so much for joining us for this episode. We can't wait to see you in the next episode. It's going to be a great one. I know that. But until then, it's time for you to be an awesomely connected human. And we're right here for that. Mm -hmm.